Geopolymer has long been touted as an environmentally friendly alternative to concrete used in 3D printed construction, but until today, we've never seen a 3D printed building. My name is Jared Gross and I'm your host at Automate Construction. I've interviewed hundreds of experts in 3D printed construction, visited dozens of construction sites, and even done some basic operator training. This video is sponsored by my course, How to 3D Print a House, but more on that later. We've got an action-packed video today, not only the 3D printed geopolymer building, but also a precast geopolymer building and some flat pack disaster housing that William Hoff is gonna show us as well. Let's meet William. Hi, I'm William Hoff with Geopolymer International. Welcome to Amagosa Valley to see the first 3D printed house in geopolymer concrete. Over 35 years, I've been trying to find a solution for low cost housing. So I did research on what the United Nations put together and they put together these flat packs for refugee camps to take them out of tents into a hard structure. So I started here and now I'm gonna show you what I wanted to do with a geopolymer. Instead of a steel portion, we're gonna see a precast portion. I used a used uh, shipping container and I made it into a battery mold system so it's portable. It's a precast container system that I made. And what I did is I cast these walls inside there so it's portable. It's the lowest cost precast concrete that you can put together and then we used uh, a geopolymer concrete to make it more sustainable. And how did you lift them up? I see you are this Basically hand just with a 10,000 pound forklift, set them in place. So if you'd like to take a look inside, it's uh, still got some supports on it. And uh, we'll be putting in uh, a floor and a roof when I do the other one. If you look inside, basically it has an embed that is made into the concrete and then we just put angle iron on it and weld the panels together. It's uh, the same exact system they use for tilt-up concrete. We were in town in a warehouse I think you've seen in uh, other videos. So what we did is we came out and centralized our, our manufacturing locations. We have one in North Carolina and this is kind of a, a subsection. Uh, we were able to get this at a very decent uh, cost on an um, auction. However, if you bought this, it's about 12000 for the tent and about uh, 7000 for the deck. And this is a 35 by 85 foot dome. And uh, I'll bring you inside to let you take a look. It just gets all your stuff out of the weather environment. Yeah, this is a godsend. It was uh, nice to be able to have something here to be able to put all our stuff instead of paying 10 grand a month. So this actually paid for itself within two months. And over here, is this an additive? So these are our silicates that we mix with our, our reactive minerals uh, to make geopolymer. Um, and then of course sand. And we uh, work on getting a dry sand. We don't like moisture because moisture creates cracks. It's a really quick way to understand geopolymer. Portland binds by calcium, a really crappy binder. Um, geopolymer binds by silica, glass. So it is a crystalline form that is stronger than hell. If you burn everything in your house, you're gonna have three things. You're gonna have glass, carbon, and steel. So you can tell that uh, geopolymer is one of those materials that just are um, indestructible. And a lot of people call different things geopolymers. Can you? Okay, there has been a misnomer in the actually academic. They've been teaching geopolymer is an alkaline activated material. It is not. We are not an alkaline activated material. We are a process of polymerization. This is growing a matrix of crystals to be able to fit together. Alkaline activated material is dangerous. If you get it on your skin, there's lye in it, the hydroxide. So we are extremely safe. If anything that you touch is not going to hurt you, not even a little bit. Following technology, we move forward from precast into 3D concrete printing. I was fortunate to have strong 3D print to be able to bring their printer down from Canada and help me with the first 3D geopolymer printed house. So this geopolymer material is Renka. Uh, we actually shipped it in, it cost a lot of money, but we have a now manufacturing plant in South Carolina and should be having geopolymer made here in the US uh, by the end of July. It seems like a lot of expansion joints uh Actually, in our design, this is our first structure. Uh, we do have quite a few expansion. This, every one is a column, uh, and it wasn't the smoothest design. We kept the smooth design because this is going to be stuccoed over. 
with geopolymer and probably a split face rock on the bottom uh, just to give it some some character. Well, maybe it was smart because I don't see much cracking. No, we don't tend to crack. We don't have those issues, although it is heat sensitive. So we printed this at night instead of during the day. So when I went to go do the foundation, I went to buy some wood and I realized that we could go ahead and print it. So we went ahead and 3D printed the foundation and then filled it in with concrete uh, after the plumbing, of course, and, and set up the printer to print on top. This structure took 21 hours. Uh, we did it in five phases, not because uh, pretty much required to, because you can actually continue to print with geopolymer. You don't really have to stop. However, having a crew working at night, um, we just don't like to beat people up. So we went ahead and broke it down into uh, five different phases. I see there's no expansion joints on that wall and it looks just fine. No, we don't need necessarily expansion joints. Those were more uh, in with columns so that we um, could go ahead and use a uh, insole deck roof, which is uh, very, very good for 3D printing materials. And I see the rebar, how does that integrate to the insole deck roof? Actually, that will be bent over and the insole deck will have beams in it to be able to hold either a roof or your next uh, floor. And you got rough in for the plumbing and electrical already? Sure did. As we were printing, I went ahead and put the, uh, the PEX tubing in. I have a few cutouts to put the electrical, but this is about as easy a uh, construction method as you can get. Placing that PEX, how much do you estimate it saved you in uh, plumbing or electrical expenses? Well, I did the sewer pipes when I did the foundation and then placing the PEX was, um, it would have been a nightmare putting it into concrete, but as we printed, I just laid it in there and it um, is pretty much finished. I just have to put on some connections and I'm done. And is this one of the vertical columns? Yes, it is. And all the doorways and windows will be trimmed. It'll be cut so that it's a, a clean seam, uh, putting everything together. What happened over here with this kind of lower lip? Uh, that as uh, This is our very first printed house, so we're uh, continually learning on the 3D printing side. We're a mortar company, so we got into 3D printing just to be able to prove how much better geopolymer is than your standard Portland. If you're watching this video because you want to learn how to 3D print a house, check out my course at the link in the description. I've condensed my four years of experience researching 3D printed houses and even completing some operator training into a four hour series of lectures so that you can learn the basic construction process of a 3D printed home, how it compares to traditional construction, the software needs, hardware needs, mixer pump systems, materials, and everything else you need to get started and decide what system to use in your 3D printed construction journey. Check it out while it's still in the beta version to get access at the beta pricing for life. Everybody's always asking, why geopolymer concrete? Well, the difference being sustainability, cost, uh, durability, recyclability, fireproof, waterproof, uh, Portland, is made from limestone and it takes a lot of heat to be able to make that into uh, the cement, to crush it and make it in cement, they have to heat it up. And it, it's basically one ton of Portland is one ton of CO2, responsible for 18% of the air's pollution. So we're looking for something that's a little bit more durable. Um, Portland lasts for 50 to 100 years in concrete. In mortar, it only lasts for 20 to 30 years. So if you're going to print with a mortar, don't you want your house to last over 30 years? Basically, the carbonization will be able to deteriorate your Portland if you don't have uh, a lot of expensive admixes. The people say Portland costs 120 bucks a yard. That's for, for driveway. If you do a freeway bridge, it's up to eight to $1,200 a yard. So uh, if you want to compare apples to apples, um, this is not something to compare to. This is a very sustainable material and it is um, recyclable. It's waterproof, fireproof, and acid resistant and lasts 10,000 years. The nice thing is you can use all your leftovers, crush it and use it uh, uh, back into your material again. With so much interest of what we're doing for the sustainability, I'm going to be doing a video just on um, Portland versus geopolymer and why we want to go there. So uh, I will definitely give uh, Jared a link and we'll be able to put that information out uh, probably within the next 30 days.